anyway, um, I wanted to introduce myself for those of you that don't know me. I'm Trish Faring. I'm the field representative and range management specialist with the North Dakota Grazing Lands Coalition. And I started with them about two and a half years ago. Prior to that, I was working for NRCS as the district conservationist. Um, I worked in Botno and Towner and Rugby and then in Beach. And uh, I've got, I'm going to, there we go. Um, my husband and I ranch north of Beach here. In addition to my daytime job, um, we raise Angus cattle, direct market beef, raise some broilers, um, and my girls have a laying hen business. So we have kind of a hodgepodge of things going on. We're in the process of opening up a vacation rental on our ranch too. So that'll be new territory for me. But anyway, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Grazing Lands Coalition. This is something different that we haven't done before. Um, Annie and I were doing a little bit of brainstorming and wanted to do something that was more focused on the ladies in the households on these farms and ranches. And uh, so the Grazing Lands Coalition was formed back in 1996. Um, it's a grassroots organization that was formed by a group of ranchers from across the state of North Dakota. And their main purpose is basically to promote the value and benefits of grazing lands in North Dakota and to the, the importance of all of our grasslands and keeping our grasslands. Um, we have like 33 mentors that are distributed across the state. And um, during Andrea's presentation, I will put a comment in the chat um, that has both my email address for contact information, as well as the website for the Grazing Lands Coalition, which most of you have been to for registering. Um, but that also, if you go to the Mentor Network tab, has um, a map with the distribution of our mentors from across the state. Um, our mentors are available to speak at any tours or meetings that you have in your area. They're um, available to visit with you one-on-one. -on -one. If you guys have something that comes up on your ranch, maybe it's a fence project, a water project, um, cover crops, uh, anything like that, bale grazing. Um, they're very open to visiting and, and talking about different subjects. Um, let's see, I'm going to talk a little bit about some upcoming events, and I will also post those in the chat. Um, we have birds, bovine, and biology on the prairie, um, which is a birding tour. It's a family event that will be on Saturday, June 18th at Chad and Amanda Nays' place at Rame. Um, and then on Wednesday, June 29th, we have our summer tour that is being hosted at Denby, North Dakota, which is up by Towner at the Rob Kramer Ranch. And then our third tour that we have this summer is the Leopold Tour, which will be held at Ellendale at Brad Sands Ranch. Um, we have Greg Judy uh, joining us there at that tour, um, which will be really, I think, an exciting tour um, and fun to, to be at. Um, so just to talk a little bit about our series that we have, um, BRA, which Annie and I thought was kind of clever, Balance, Resiliency, and Authenticity. Um, so we have this lined up to start this evening with Andrea Bowman as our speaker. Um, next Thursday, May 12th, is Annie Carlson talking about menu planning, save your money and your mind. And then on May 19th is Nikki Darrington. Um, she will be speaking about Clean Your Coop making your homestead back into a home. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Andrea. Um, Andrea Bowman works for the NDSU Extension Service as a program coordinator in leadership and civic engagement. She also raises registered and commercial Angus cattle with her husband and three kids. Andrea is going to be talking this evening about balance, the balancing act of farm and ranch life. In this session, you'll learn tips to recognize and manage stress discuss balancing work and family, and develop skills to focus on your top priorities. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself and turn it over to Andrea. Thanks, Tricia. Um, I'm gonna share my screen here. Maybe. There we go. Um, so thank you for having me here. And I think it was um, divine intervention. So Trisha had asked me to 
um, speak about this. And then of course, you know, we went through a couple blizzards in the meantime. So I thought it was a really good time for me to do some self-reflection on this very topic. Uh, so like Trish said, I work for NDSU Extension in the area of leadership and civic engagement. And I'm not going to talk about the balancing act of farm and ranch life because I'm an expert at it. I'm gonna share a lot of resources, most of them extension resources we have, and um, some tips I've learned over the years and just want um, to start a discussion. And something different works for all of us and that's okay. So I just wanna give you um, a few tips that you, you can share. Um, so I work in the area of leadership and civic engagement and we really focus on um, working with boards and board management, helping them be the best they can be and also work with leadership and how people learn more about themselves and how they can work with their teams. So this is my team, um, that's my family, um, my husband, Eric, and our three kids. Um, and that is on our ranch south of Rain, just north of Misty a little bit, so. Um, that's our crew. Um, and so that's what we're gonna focus on today is the people of our operations and how they are very important. Um, so I wanna talk about finding balance. And a few weeks ago, I was listening to a podcast and I don't remember for sure who even it was. It might've been Matthew Kelly. And he said, there's no such thing as true balance. And I was like, what? I love the word balance. I was just like borderline upset because I really like the word balance and I use it a lot. And then as I reflected on it a little bit more, or I thought, you know, like the scale we have there, there isn't ever true balance. We're constantly tipping one direction or the other. So it's more about finding peace and where we're spending our time and setting those priorities so we're content with where our time is being spent and that we're not tipped too far one way constantly, that we're, we are working to find that balance. So I wanna talk about recognizing and managing stress, discuss some tips for balancing work and family, and also work on some skills to help you develop um, some tips, habits that can help you focus and make those decisions to help you um, be on the side of the scale that you want to be at the time, if that makes sense. So the first thing I think is to remember that sustainable farms and ranches need sustainable farms and ranchers. So we have to take care of ourselves and we need to remember that we can control what we can. So let's Play-Doh. My husband thought it was a green rock. It's not a green rock, it's Play-Doh. So let's Play-Doh in a rock. And my analogy is, you know, control what you can. Think about a rock in one hand and Play-Doh in the other. Unfortunately, in agriculture, we have a lot of rocks, figuratively and realistically in Southwest North Dakota. There's a lot of things that we can't control, but we can control ourselves and how we react to those situations. So that's what we will we'll, we'll focus on today is thinking about some ways that we control how we react to those rocks. We can't get rid of them, all of them. Maybe we can move them, nudge them to the side, but they're always gonna be there, but we can control ourselves. So the most importantly is just to take care of your greatest asset. And that is the people of your operation. Um, and do, do a check-in. You know, we have very intense maintenance plans for the equipment. Um, on our operations, we focus on herd health, herd management, and sometimes we forget to do that self check in and check our own dashboard. So more than anything, I want you to do that self check in first, you know, do not treat yourself, you are not like the old ranch pickup, it is not normal for you to have your check engine light on all the time. And maybe that's just at our house that the check engine light is always on or the fuel gauge doesn't work on the old ranch pickup. But maybe that's okay for the old ranch pickup, but it's not okay for you. So think about, um, you know, why your why your check engine light might be coming on, or what you need to do to fuel yourself. If you guys have any questions, I will try and monitor um, the chat as we go, or we're going to have time at the end for for some question and answers as well. Mm -hmm. So looking at some, when you're doing that self-check, um, looking at your dashboard, 
looking at some symptoms of stress. Um, they can be physical, behavioral, uh, relationship, um, and emotional. And um, I, should, I should add that most of this information I'm sharing is from Extension Publications from Dr. Sean Brotherson. And I will share the website where you can go to for the complete um, publications where this information is from. I just kind of took, took bits and pieces there. But you know, we have a lot of things that, that can contribute to stress, the egg pressures, family finances, personal stresses. Um, physically, it might be low energy. Uh, behaviorally, just maybe diff difficulty concentrating is knowing how we want to spend our time and having tools that you can utilize to help you make those decisions so that you spend your time in places that you're comfortable with. Like we talked at the beginning, it's maybe not about finding balance, it's about finding peace in where you're at at the time. And that's one thing I still struggle with sometimes, but now. I try really hard to focus on being more present where I am at the time. There's times where I'll have to be one place or the other, but just accepting that, you know, I've made the decision to be there and that's where I'm going to be and that's where I'm going to be present. Um, you know, about 11 years ago, I remember that because I was pregnant with my youngest son. Uh, we had a holistic resource management course in RAIN. And I remember my two biggest takeaways from that we're just always looking at the big picture. So we're looking at our farm and family operation from the big picture and then thinking that there's one resource that we can't replace and that's our time. So we really need to focus on how we're gonna spend our time and make sure we're happy with our decisions of how we're spending our time. Um, if any of you are familiar with the emotional intelligence work, um, that book can be very powerful too to just help you understand your self-management and your awareness of others. Uh, I really like the Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And one of the um, things Stephen Covey talks about is the time matrix and just helping you um, analyze what's important, what's urgent, you know, what's not important, what's not urgent. Um, and they also talk about the emotional bank account. So I, I really like um, Stephen Covey's work. So whatever works for you to have a process um, so you can, can prioritize things in your life um, kind of regularly and so you're comfortable about it. Um, Kelly Thorne, um, some of you might know Kelly. Um, she always says, I think about how I feel if I will, if I do or don't do something. And so I think that's a simple way to look at the situation too. Um, some of you might not have been on earlier today, but I was in Kinmer today for a training um, for work, board management training. Now I'm back in MaxFest at my parents' house. And in between, I made a quick trip to Newburgh um, to catch my niece music concert. So it's been kind of a crazy day, but everything I did today filled up my bucket and, and made me um, glad that, that I was where I was. And I also think it's just about, I think, well, if I get through this, then I have some time to focus on other things. And that leads us into really finding um, what you're focusing on and what's important to you. Um, maybe you have a vision statement or goals. I work with organizations a lot and we talk about their vision statements or their goals. Sometimes we don't always take the time to write them for our farmer ranch or families. And so that really helps us if we have a clear vision and goals, helps us set our top priorities so that we can focus on what's most important to us. Um, and sometimes don't be afraid to refocus or even just switch lenses. Maybe you need to switch to the wide lens and look at things from, from a little different angle. Or maybe this is where you call a friend, phone a friend and say, okay, help me out here. <laughs> or just talk me through this. I don't know how I can be everywhere. Um, so part of this whole journey is that my daughter is in a track meet in Glendive tomorrow. And I was a day off all week. I thought there was like an extra day in this week for something. So I was like, yeah, I'll be there Friday. And I was like, no, I will not be in Glendive Friday morning. <laughs> I could be, but I'm not going to get up early in the morning because I want to spend some time with my parents because I'm here. And so 
I've made that decision and, and I just have to, to be at peace with that. So I, I really like the, the camera lens analogy, but that resonates with me. And um, I think I, I read that in a book not that long ago. And so I've, I've used that a lot lately, even just with myself, like thinking, okay, how am I looking at this? Um, and time management, I wanted to, to find a way to kind of wrap this all up. And about a month or so ago, we had an um, extension agent from Georgia extension um, give us a session on time management. Um, of our, it's an extension publication they have, and we're working to develop one for North Dakota. And I thought it just really tied everything um, that we talked about, um, that we've covered today together. And so it's the publication is called 10 Strategies for Better Time Management. But it starts out by saying, you can't actually manage time. You manage the events in your life in relation to time. So how do we manage the event? And the first thing is really just to know how you're spending your time. Do that, that self check-in. Um, in one of Brene Brown's books, she talks about how she realized that she had didn't have a concept of how long projects took. And I think um, sometimes we get caught up in that. My husband does a lot. Like, like there is no way we can get that done in an afternoon. Uh, it's just knowing um, knowing what, what we can do in a certain amount of time and knowing how you're spending your time. Setting your priorities, we've talked about that already. Maybe using a planning tool. Annie's gonna talk about planning meals. Nikki's gonna talk about getting organized, which is the next step. So this all ties perfectly into your next two sessions. Now, when it comes to different um, planning tools, they can be, um, you know, whatever works for you. Maybe you still like paper calendar. Um, maybe you like Outlook. Maybe you like Teams. Um, there's Trello and Asana are two um, digital planning programs you can use. You can use them for project management. Um, whatever works for you, just come up with something that that helps you keep a track of how you're you're planning things and getting those things organized. I understand it's easier for some people um, than others. Some of us um, have different temperaments and we love to do lists and checking them off. And some people don't really, that doesn't resonate with them. And that's okay. Um, it's finding what works for you. Um, scheduling things appropriately. I always like when we go to the dentist and they want, or the doctor, and they want you to schedule out, you know, six months or a year in advance. And I'm like, I don't know what we're doing tomorrow. I don't know what we're doing six months from now or a year from now. Um, but schedule when you can. And I think when we work in farm and ranching, we have to schedule, but we have to learn to be a little bit flexible because like that rock and Play-Doh, we can't always control everything. Um, delegate. Don't be afraid to get help from others. Um, stop procrastinating. Um, it's easy to do sometimes to just keep moving that thing down your to-do list. Um, manage time wasters. This one can be really powerful. Um, when you're reflecting on how you're spending your time, what are those time wasters? Maybe those time wasters are bringing you, you know, some, some joy and some peace. Um, but sometimes like maybe it's social media those can bring out negative energy in us as well. So just be aware of how, how you may or may not be wasting time. Um, you know, when Nikki talks about me being more organized, that's always my um, argument with my family. Like if we're organized, that saves us time. That's why it's important. Um, nobody in my family seems to buy into that concept, but I keep trying. Um, avoid multi multitasking. Um, this one makes me sad too, because I always thought it was really good at multitasking. I've learned that you can't truly multitask. If you're really gonna focus on something, it's one task at a time to really focus. And then just staying healthy is the last, last tip for better time management. And so this was what was like, this is the publication I need. This is the conclusion on the time management um, publication. And I think it wraps up everything we talked about here. It says, whatever time management strategies you use, take time to evaluate how they have worked for you. Do you have a healthy balance between work and home life? Are you accomplishing the tasks that are most important in your life? 
Are you investing enough time in your own personal well-being? If the answer is no to any of these questions, then reevaluate your time management strategies and transition the ones that will work better for you. Successful time management leads to greater personal happiness, more accomplishments at home and work, and a more satisfying future. I thought that was a good way to, to wrap that up. And then I just threw in this slide there. I use this when I work with organizations and I thought this is so relevant to our farm and ranch organizations as well, our teams, our businesses. Um, you know, when we're a well-oiled machine, everything works better. And just starting with that energy and that enthusiasm. And on the farm and ranch, I think it's remembering why you do what you do. It's your passion for it, what your vision is. Um, having that clear vision and direction. Don't accept mediocre performance. Have good judgment. We know that when we're managing our stress, our judgment is better. Um, collaborate. Uh, don't, not, don't be afraid to ask for help. Walk the talk, especially like me, I have kids. You know, we're constantly modeling the way for them. Encourage new ideas. Learn from our mistakes and build on those interpersonal skills. I think those all are important things that we can use to, to oil our machines and don't, don't be afraid to um, work on some self-care. Sometimes I wish we could just change our own oil and then we could go on, everything's good, reset. Um, unfortunately, it's not that easy with us. I think it's important to remember that the most productive thing you can do is relax. And that's not often probably our first thought maybe in farming and ranching industry. Um, it's the small habits, how you spend your mornings, how you talk to yourself, what you read, what you watch, who you share your energy with, who has access to you that will change your life. So today I want you to uh, identify three wellness steps that you can begin to implement and maybe look at a couple action steps that, that will go with them. And that's my contact information. Um, so please feel free to, to reach out to me if you, if you have questions or would like to visit. Um, I can share the links to all of the resources I had, um, certainly with Tricia, so you can get those out to everybody. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I haven't checked in on the chat lately. Um, I didn't feel like any questions. Maybe there was some at the end. There was, um, for those of you that didn't see it in the chat, um, if you would post your name, if, if it says iPad, <laughs> you'll have to post your name to get in the, the drawing, but I am going to do a drawing for a little door prize. Um, if you post your favorite thing about spring in the chat. So did you see anything else, uh, Annie or Andrea, any other questions in there? Um, I just see like some tips people like feeling the sun's warmth on my skin and getting out in the garden again. Our favorite things about spring, definitely. Okay. Well, thank you, Andrea. I really appreciate you joining us this evening and um, enjoyed your presentation. I made myself quite a few different notes. And one of them that I think that, um, and not just farm and ranch wives, but I think everybody in general just has a hard time saying the word no. Like we always think we have to do more. We always think we have to help with this activity or that activity. And at a certain point, it enough is enough. And you have to decide that for yourself when it is. But I, I just think that it, it shouldn't be that hard to say no, but we always have that guilt that comes along with that word. Yeah, so there's a book, it's called The Negativity Remedy, maybe, and I forget the author, Nicole Phillips, is that right? Um, and she talks in that book about giving your best yes. And so she's got some tips on like reflecting on, you know, when, when you're going to be involved, when you're going to say yes to things and, and giving your best yes, so that when you're involved in things, you're, you're giving it your all. So maybe taking on a few less things but being more present and being more involved in the things you're in. 
Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to stop the recording and then we can uh, turn the chat. If everybody, if you want to unmute, turn your video on so that we can see your faces um, and we can have some discussion and chat here for a while. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop.